everyone. It's time for my next cash stuffing. If you're interested in seeing more, stick around. It's time to release the word Kraken. Welcome or welcome back. I am Sarah. I am a Gen X librarian and indie author who's figuring out what she's been doing with her money. And it is time for another cash stuffing. I have lost track of what number this is yet again, but um, this is an interesting month uh, because I've made some changes to this system. What I'm stuffing, how I'm stuffing, and um, and it means a few things to be shared with all of you. So if you're new here and you don't know what I'm doing, in an effort to figure out how to better manage my indie publishing business and not go into debt, I started doing the cash stuffing system of budgeting. This is where I go through my paycheck, pull out cash every paycheck. For me, it's every two weeks, and I stuff envelopes of the things and priorities I have for spending. And then it evolves because I learned so much about how I spend. And I ended up creating a couple different categories of things I spend my money on. Obviously, first there was my bills, and I got a month ahead on those so that there's always $2,600 in my account to pay the next bills. Should something happen and the bottom falls out, I have at least one month to pay bills before I have to panic. I have what they're what are called sinking funds where I tend to put money in and take money out. They sink uh, every month because I spend from them. I have a long-term sinking fund and I have short-term sinking funds. So the sinking funds for short-term tend to drop really quickly uh, because they are typically monthly expenses like gas, the dog stuff, my personal care, um, snacks, things like that. I also have my longer term ones for which are like saving for home improvement projects, car things like insurance, which I pay annually. Things like that are also part of what I save for. And then there are my publishing needs. Some of the income from that goes back right, oh well, no, all of the income from that goes right back into it. And there's a totally different video about stuffing those envelopes every month. Uh, this video focus on, focuses on stuffing these personal envelopes. And it's been a little while since I've done a what is here and how much is it kind of video. And because I've just made some big changes, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a deeper look at what's here and what it means, not just for anybody who might be new and wondering what this is, but also so people who have been here a long time can see why changes are being made yet again. And this is kind of just how my brain works. Um, I've talked about it in some other videos, but I've done the Clifton Strengths Assessment during the pandemic. I did it. And this is like Myers Briggs, where you know, it tells you stuff about your personality. The Clifton Strengths one from Gallup talks to you about your strengths. They have a list of 34 potential strengths people have. And the object is to not strengthen your weaknesses, not to improve what you're weak at, but to lean into your strengths. And they tell you in your first round of the assessment, your top five. And then you can give them a little bit of extra money and you can unlock all 34 of yours that they rank based on your responses to their questions, what yours are. And it's not just this means this and this means this, it's how all of these strengths play together. For example, my number one strength is learning. I love learning. Uh, any opportunity to learn, especially if I am going to benefit from it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn it. Like, I don't know, cash stuffing my life to figure out my budget. I had to learn something. I was delighted. It has given me over a year's worth of joy to do this, to learn this. So we're keeping with the joy. We're keeping with things that make me happy. Uh, the second one is input. Not only do I love learning, I love sharing. I don't know if you've guessed that from these videos. I love sharing the things I learned. Uh, but one of my other strengths is called strategic. And that means I like to plan ahead and give my my mind things to focus on and things to figure out. Uh, those are how some of the other strengths play in. But strategic, strategic makes plans. 
And my version of a strategic th strength is that it is constantly adjusting. As I learn from people and places, I adjust the strategy of my life. Uh, but the most amusing way I have seen that strength play out is on when I'm driving, I have a very clear vision of where I wanna go and how long it's gonna take me to get there and how fast I have to go. And if you mess that up, you trigger my road rage because nothing is worse for a strategic strength than disrupting the strategy. And I see this reflected in both my parents and my sister. Uh, and I'm quite curious how will it affect my niece someday if she will develop the strength. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean everybody who has this sort of little coping mechanism of creating little strategies has a high strategic strength. It's just how these strengths play out with me. So every time I change this plan, know that it is my strategic strength, uh, deciding things need to change so we can get to the goal. And it allows me to be a little bit more nimble than I might appear with my plans. I know my angle and then I uh, adjust things to get there. And if that isn't also a summary of how I write, I don't know what is. So yes, it plays into everything in my life. So changes have been made and we're just going to roll with it and see how it works. And if it doesn't work, we'll make more changes because changes is, is an, an unending thing. The biggest change I have made is that I have decided to get rid of my, my bill stuffing binder. So here is the logic. I don't know if I want to continue to be a month ahead. I know you're already pissed at me. That's okay. You're allowed to be pissed at me. This is not how you would do it. So I've been looking at my credit card debt and I have been considering how I can pay it off faster. And is it better to be a month ahead on bills with that buffer or to put that $2,600 right into the credit cards and pay that off faster so that I am not spending so many dollars a month on credit card bills and then can rebuild not just the month ahead fund faster, but the emergency fund and the one month buffer, the thousand dollar buffer, like all of those things that I'm putting off because I have credit card debt that I need to finish paying off. And I'd like to do, as that continues to evolve, over the next year, I think that every, everything as aggressively as I can pay it off can be done in the next year, but that 2,600 would make a huge difference in making it happen faster. Have I done this yet? No. What I have done is I have unstuffed those bills. Now that binder, because I love this binder, it's my um, Soul Mama Virgo binder. And if your girl isn't a Virgo, I don't know what is quintessential Virgo. So this is now the travel binder. Uh, we're not necessarily gonna look at it. I pulled it out just so you can see that it now has my New Orleans trip money in it. And believe me, that's been spent. It's just sitting here so we can unstuff things when it is time. Uh, the Disney trip is in here. Now uh, I've, I've adjusted this. And of course my little Disney rainbow unicorn Note seriously, I love Inside Out. Uh, I saw number two and I wept because uh, not only do I now love Ennui, she is French, she is disdained, um, but I saw my anxiety so very clearly uh, and how I learned to manage it. But of course that'll make me cry. Uh, I have continued to keep the things I don't really need, but I need, I need these things. Uh, even though the pins one was moved to the travel binder, all the other ones are here for me to continue to stuff as I choose. And, um, and then I've made, I don't think I've made many adjustments in my sinking funds, but we'll talk about that. Uh, there, I don't remember if the uh, adjustment I made was last time, but we'll go over it again. Uh, so what we're going to do now is... The 2600 is for, until I make a decision about this credit card issue. I will keep $2,600 in my checking account at all times. That is the month, month ahead. That is the buffer. If it dips below 2600, I got to pull cash out of envelopes and put it in there because that is the priority is keeping that 2600 there till I can make a decision. 
when I do these envelope stuffings, I'm going to just do my sinking funds and I'm going to next month's, and this is stuffing number 16. Look, I made, I'm so, that's a little strategic strength. It's thinking ahead. You're gonna forget, Sarah, so let's put the number on the paper. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm gonna start splitting this in half so that I can do two stuffings, but they'll be shorter videos. So they might be stuffings and something else. I don't know yet. Um, the more writing and publishing content that I wanna share, the more, and the more I'm looking at like the numbers for these videos, cash stuffing isn't as getting as much interest as the business of publishing is. And that's kind of where this all started was for me to make better business decisions by getting my personal money together. So uh, let's get my, let's keep my personal money in some sort of order, but make evolved decisions. Uh, maybe next year my word of the day, my word of the year will be evolved, but it's still intentional. These are still intentional decisions, uh, which is why I am not making a snap judgment on the month ahead money going into a credit card or just staying in my checking account where it can be a nice pad. So this is what we're doing. This is the first paycheck of August for me. And normal people, they count one, two paychecks a month. I do get paid every other week, which means I periodically have a magic month. Every every six months or so, I have what they call a magic month, where I get a third paycheck. Uh, and that can create a little bit more chaos in my life. But this is also going to be considered in the credit card debt repayment because it does give me an opportunity to have a bigger payment going to my credit cards, but also getting ahead on some of these cash stuffing envelopes, get them closer to what I, where I want them on a regular basis so that I'm just inserting the difference. And if something doesn't need money, it doesn't get money. So I should have a thousand dollars here in my envelope for this paycheck. That's what I need to stuff these envelopes as well as some of these. Uh, some of these are the travel binder. Actually, we are getting into the travel binder, but also into the things I don't need, but I need envelopes. So let's see what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, 56, 57, 20, 40, 60, 88, 20, 40, 60, 89, 20, 40, 60, 70, 85, 95, 1,000. It's so easy to count when you don't have a difficult number to play with. All right, we're gonna keep my um, calculator to the side because I clearly didn't need it for simple arithmetic today. That's always a bonus for me. And let's get this in my tray and let's look at the envelopes. So the first one is my, what I call coffee tea monster. And if you watched Animaniacs and you loved Dot as much as I did in the 90s, you remember the coffee tea monster reference. This has way more than I need. Right now, and I think I said this in one of my last stuffings, I am solely going to Dunkin' Donuts. I work in a building that has a Starbucks in it on campus and they are closed for the summer because we are doing some construction. So I am not doing my normal summer Starbucks stuff, which means, and I'm not really going more often to Dunkin' Donuts, but I don't need to stuff this. This only needs to have $50 a month and it currently has 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 5, 10, 15, 25. So it has well more than it needs. So it's gonna be a little while before I stuff it again, but let's put in 125. And will I reconsider this? No, because Starbucks will be opening again as soon as this construction project is over. Uh, and there is a good chance that people boycotting Starbucks will mean I can get it more frequently. Am I boycotting Starbucks? Not really. I, I don't go enough to care or for me to be a difference in their income. All right, the short-term house, this is primarily for the house cleaning, but cleaning supplies for what I need. Uh, and it's never consistent how much I'm gonna pay for a house cleaning. It depends on how, the, the it's usually a team of two people, how deep they're gonna go, how long it's gonna take them. Uh, sometimes it's like $300, other times it's like $200, sometimes it's $100. It really is a touch and go. Uh, so I have one, 
20, 40, 65. And this is getting another 100. So, yeah, no, I do need this calculator, don't I? I don't know if you can see it. So it's 1, 2, 20, 40, 65 for that. And then the other 45 is going, nope, the going, it's going into this also. So. When you don't do things in the right order. All right. So this does not have 265. This has 1, 2, 20, 40, 60, 83, 10. And then supplies, it says things I might go and get a target. It has 85. So this has 395. Will I be doing a house cleaning soon? I'm not entirely sure. And I lost everything. So there we go. Next is short-term car, which is primarily gas and car washes. This is getting 90. And I'm gonna take the 10 out here because this is getting 80 into This is getting the 20. All right, this is supposed to get 80, but I have two 20s uh, instead of a 210 or a 20 and 210. So I'm just swapping out that 10 that will go into car wash. This now is 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150. And then car wash has 25. So let me count again 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150. 160, 175. I don't do a lot of driving. I fill up maybe once a month. If I do an excessive amount of driving, twice. Um, but I was away in July, so I haven't really done much filling up. Short term for His Royal Highness, Cedric Doggery, my dog. He's adorable. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of him. I'm gonna have to try and remember. This is getting 50. Uh, and it is not going, let's see, it has 20, 45. So this is going into food um, because he's gonna need food soon. So he has 50, 70, 95. 115, 135, 155. 175, 195. Uh, so what are the things that are here? Because this is evolving. Um, this is one of the ones that is evolving his food, his groomer, but he's nine. He's a nine year old pupper and I love him, but I have to face the reality that he is aging. And while I have at the vet a plan for him, cause he goes to Banfield, which is at a PetSmart, he has a plan that is not an emergency or insurance plan. Anything that's an emergency has to come out of my budget. And um, I need to start stuffing for his inevitable emergency. While I was in California, he broke two teeth and they said, it's not a problem. I'm going to change his vet plan to include the dental again, which means that bill's going to go up, but that's fine. There's a buffer in my bills right now because of changes to my, um, to other bills. And, um, so I'm fine with that. Uh, but I need to start building about a thousand dollar emergency fund just for him, which is going to take some time. Uh, another reason why I am thinking of trying to get that credit card bill set paid off faster. Uh, and then his treats, uh, his treats are also changing because now that he is chipping teeth, he cannot eat his normal chews and he's going into the more expensive ones, which means my budget has to be adjusted. All right, Sarah care. This is all my self care stuff. So something has come out of here. That is my supplement. I was taking a supplement for hair loss. I stopped doing it 
because I was curious if it truly did make a difference. And I don't feel like it has been making that much of a difference. That's $500 every three months, every six months that I had to spend. And that hurt my heart now that I am very in deep, uh, my fingers are deep into my money. So I decided to cancel that for now to, to keep an eye on my hair loss and see if it is, um, if it is needed to return. So that is out. Uh, that money will probably go into that dog emergency fund, but the 500 was spread out among some other things that needed to be stuffed a little more aggressively right now, in my opinion. So here we have massage. That's a hundred. That's not getting anything. Uh, petty is of the 130. Um, I am gonna get the 130 out. Yeah. So I'm going to take the 50 out of petty and just put the hundred in there and use the 50 for the rest of the things I'm going to stuff. Um, what is this hair needs that 50. So now that has 55 edibles has 50. So that is getting 20 that now has 70. And Quip is fine, it has 30, and Others is getting the last 10. That has 110 for 435. This means I have been able to lower how much I put in my self-care envelope each month and increase it in other places. So gifts is getting $50, mostly because my birthday month is coming up. This also means both my parents' birthdays are coming up. Uh, the holidays are coming up. We're not big present people. We tend to do like one big gift um, and that's it. And also we live far apart. My parents are in the South. My sister's on the West Coast. I'm in the Northeast of the East Coast. So um, there's there's not a lot of gift exchange. We buy something, we send it to them the end. So I tend to stick to about like 50 bucks per holiday gift. And my sister doesn't even want presents anymore. She's got a two year old who needs all the presents. So having one, two, three, four hundred and ten, this is probably um, not gonna be filled much more often until I start spending some of it. I wanted to keep about 500 in here just in case there were big things. Holidays is not getting anything. This is holidays and celebrations. It has 150, 70, 85. Um, and I didn't even put anything on here to, to put in, to write that on. Uh, this is the next holiday that is coming for me is my birthday. I do consider that a holiday. I am that person, but then it'll be Halloween, maybe some school supplies. I do think the back to school season is a holiday for someone who's obsessed with planners and school supplies. Um, but Thanksgiving, uh, New Year's, Hanukkah, those are the things that I'll be revving up for next. That's the second half of the year. It's like the most expensive holiday season. But this is really not to buy gifts with, but to have as, uh, for me, Thanksgiving is, um, is not really a holiday I'm so crazed about these days. Uh, but I really do like to stay at home and relax and eat potatoes. And this goes to buy the extra potatoes that I need to celebrate that way. Um, and the same for New Year's. I like to be at home, not on the roads, hanging out, making some special snacks, having some champagne. That This is what that money is for. It's to pay for extra things that make me happy. My accountant is not getting anything. And that's because this was one of the things my that 500 from my supplements went to so now i have one two three twenty five which makes this fully funded until next year when i have to pay taxes so i no longer have to stuff my accountant uh, i will probably start creating fully funded slips so that i can put all the cash into the bank long-term house is getting 20. these are for those house projects that you, you want to do but you don't necessarily have all the money to do when I pay off the credit cards I can get much more aggressive with this there are some things I really want to do I want to repaint I want to remove the popcorn from the ceilings 
and there are some flooring projects I want to do. And then some um, just maintenance kind of things like handyman projects, like the um, the railing on a set of stairs has, cut, has broken off. Uh, it was always like that. The people who I bought this from knocked it when they were moving out and I just, I still haven't repaired it. It's been nearly 15 years. I don't care. Uh, but I will, if I want to sell this house someday and some of these projects I really would like to do in the next few years, and they're going to need a couple thousand dollars. But right now I have 120, 40, 60, 80, 200, which means when I do my bill swap, I can, uh, replace some of that cash. I mean, 200 isn't isn't a drop in the pan for what I want to do, but um, but it kind of is. Long term car uh, is got a few months before things will have to be paid moving forward. This past month was my annual inspection date, so this is getting 220, um, but most of that is going into insurance, where I need about 1700, and I have one two, three, four, five. So we're going to put 200 of the 220. I'll put that there for now. 200 in here. So now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thus being fully funded. Next will be my annual excise tax, which has to have 800 and currently has one, two, three, four, five. Uh, my registration is where this next 20 is going. That is not something I have to do for two years, but might as well not have to stuff it. And then the inspection, which I do annually is empty, but I took the cash out of that one because in the state I live in, you pay for your inspections typically with cash. So I just took it with me uh, from the envelope. So that is empty and that is just $35. Uh, even my registration is like 50 bucks every two years. So it's not a ton of money. Uh, and then I just totally did not count that extra 20 for registration. So I have $2,220 in there. So these are the envelopes where uh, they're relatively new to my system because of the things that happened in the last fiscal year. Because my work functions on the fiscal year, I sometimes have to do a summer reset anyway based on changes to uh, salary, insurances, anything that they might deduct directly from my paycheck. But one of the things I realized this year is that medical is a hot mess. Uh, I have an FSA account. I'm gonna put 20 in here, but that is not always going to be enough to cover some of the changes the healthcare system has put into place in the last year or two. Uh, so I want to have this buffer of $600. This is also going to temporarily be the dog's buffer. Um, in case something happens to him, I'll have the 600 that I can pay for while I build up that emergency fund for him. So right now this has one, two, three, four, 50, 70, 90, 510. Uh, yes, a chunk of that 500 from supplements did go in here. So what is it, 510? Next is memberships. These are things I join that um, I have never really thought about. <laughs> things like my American Library Association membership usually had come out of library budget, but I'm covering it now because our library budget is tight. Uh, and it is my professional development. So it's getting 25, but there are other writing organizations that I join. Um, I'm a friend of my local public library. This money can come out of that. So this now has 20, 40, 60, 80, 85, 90, 95. And this needs about 350 a year. So we're just starting small. All those things just got paid and I figured it out. The entertainment bonus isn't getting anything, but 20, 40, 55 is here. I, um, I got rid of Netflix after uh, the month of June because I watched Bridgerton and a few other things that I had wanted to see that I had created a list of. Now I am in AMC Plus because I wanted to watch Interview with a Vampire season two, which I loved despite the lack of the stat, but that's, that is, 
expected because of the nature of the work. But I finished just in time for the San Diego Comic-Con preview of season three with Rockstar Lestat. If you love vampire stuff and you have not read Interview with a Vampire, this is the time to do it because the, the Interview with a Vampire series, it is old. It is from, it starts in, she wrote it, the first one in 76, I think. It's, it is as old as I am. It is like 48 years old. Um, but Lestat, you, you might want to sleep with, I mean, Sam Reed, the actor who is portraying him in the show, it is, does make you want to sleep with him, uh, especially rock star Lestat. But the music, the person they got to write the music, I don't know who it is yet. They're just, it, it's like chef's kiss. It's perfection. And I'm so very happy to um, to have gotten to see the preview and understood everything as it stands at the end of season two. Though I have some questions that I think everybody has and everybody's just made assumptions about. But now I get to see all the deep dives on TikTok and YouTube about season two and what's coming for season three and not feel spoiled. But what will I do? That was like 10 bucks for the month. Um, and after that, I will probably, I don't know. I also gave up Hulu because I'm not watching anything on Hulu. And I probably will do Disney Plus next, but I think the only thing I'm keeping that I pay for is Max because I am consistently watching content on that. Um, but I have to figure out when I, I have access to Prime through something else that I don't have to pay for. So those are really my two, that and YouTube are my three platforms. I don't pay for YouTube at this point, but should I? I don't know yet. Anyway, so this is a buffer so I can do a month of this here, a month of this there to see the shows that I've been waiting for or people have told me I would enjoy. So AMC Plus this month, Lestat has been watched. Next would be Mayfair and Witches, but there's also a new Orphan Black show with, um, with the woman who played Jessica Jones, who I love and have loved almost every show she has ever done that I have seen. I think I've loved everyone. So I'm looking forward to what I can get from AMC this month. Rent. How do I have mortgage and a rent? This is the rent from my writing studio. This, uh, I've gone back and forth on, on where this goes. And now I have it here in my sinking funds instead of in my writing folder. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because this is my, this is really part of the Sarah Care self-care. Um, if you've not heard the story of how I ended up with a writing studio, it is not a studio, it is a desk in a greater studio. But I've spent years, years, a decade or more, writing in cafes and libraries. And when you do that, you are beholden to them. And if you're, especially if you're in a cafe, you have to, patronize the establishment. You have to buy food. At the very least, you have to buy coffee or tea or something. Uh, and so I was spending over a hundred dollars a weekend to some week, some uh, over a hundred dollars a month, some months to have a place to write, especially on heavy writing months. And I remember early in these videos where I was talking about the writing budget, someone's like, don't forget to budget in snacks during national novel writing month. Exactly. But if you're at a library and writing, you typically can't bring in food. You couldn't sit at a table and have a whole meal. And if you're spending hours there writing, you're gonna want a meal at some point. So I was spending a lot of money on food and, uh, and then I also had to leave when they closed. Regardless of what place I was, they all closed eventually. And I was not on my own schedule. I was on their schedule and I hated that. But I did it because that was my option. Until a friend said, she had a studio and for a hundred bucks a month, I could have a desk. So now I can bring my own food. I can set my own schedule. I can stay as long as I want and not feel like I'm burdening them by so sucking up their electricity and Wi-Fi and taking a seat and not eating. Uh, or I won't be interrupted by random children at the library who belong in the library playing and having fun and learning to read. Like children belong in the library. I'm not saying anything of the sort, but when you are writing, that is disruptive. So this gives me a place to go to do what I need to do to not feel like I am creating a problem for anybody else. And that's the one thing I hate doing. So we're putting a hundred in, but I need about 1200 a year. Uh, and right now I have one, two, three, four, 500. So I do have enough for the rest of the year. 
Uh, and what I will very likely do is pop all 500 of this in the bank, pay the woman I rent from until January, and then just stuff this monthly till I can do it again. Buffer, oh, we have 500. Buffer, nothing's going in Buffer right now. Buffer has $100. This is uh, from my bills envelope that I decided to keep here and move and um, move into the sinking funds because this is where a buffer is really needed. Um, should anything be overspent, routinely the house cleaning gets overspent. So this buffer gives me a little wiggle room. I just wanna keep it like a hundred, two hundred dollars. I'm not fussy about it. It's just to know it's here, to know should I overspend in some place, there's something here to, to buffer. So that's not getting anything. And then water bill is getting 40. Now, since I'm not stuffing my bills, I realized I should extract the water bill from this. Uh, and I hummed and hawed about how to deal with the utility bill in general. And if you don't know, my utility bill's a little chaotic. I have my gas, I'm a gas uh, home, so I have a gas bill. That is on a payment plan. I pay the same amount every month. I think 49, 79, something along those lines. It's consistent every month. And I am a consistent user of my utilities. Rarely do I deviate. They rarely have to go up or down during the year. And at the end of the year, they just reset and they give me a new amount and it tends to stay about the same. It changes based on the pricing of their kilowatt payments. But my electricity, is significantly more chaotic. While that is also on a budget plan, that one I think is a 79 a month, I also pay about $58 into a solar farm every month. So instead of my home, which is a townhouse, having solar panels on it, I pay $58 and I am in, and if you go, if you're driving on the side of the road and you see just a field full of solar panels, that's a solar farm. Some states do these, some states don't. Mine does. Why is that important? Because that I live in a state that can have really long periods of sunny days. This summer has been ridiculously dry. It has been sunny and bright. I think almost a week now we have had nothing but sunny days and it's very Sesame Street. But that is getting, I have been invested in the solar farm since before the pandemic. So now it's really paying out. And for the summer into fall, into the early part of winter, essentially all of my electricity bill is paid. I pay in $58. It pays out more than I have to pay in electricity. So I am not actually paying that $79 of my electricity bill every month. That's getting sort of buffered into that month ahead. And I think what I will be doing after this month is deliberately pulling out another $79 especially on after the month, if I don't have to pay it and it goes into something like the buffer envelope or something else, depending on what I did. If you were here with me on the channel last year in the fall, it got to the point where I had so much buffer from that, that I created that month ahead fund. That's how I got $2,600 ahead. I kept stuffing that 79 and any little bonus I brought in got stuffed into the month ahead. And now I am a month ahead because of that. So this solar farm is the best investment I make. My water bill on the, and these are monthly expenses. So that change doesn't, that doesn't always change, but my water bill is a pain in the butt because it is also, it's also a variable bill that can change every month. And I can't, to a payment plan with it. It's also every three months. It has been sort of averaging out at $115 a month. So that's what, or $115 a quarter. So that is what I'm trying to keep here. I just paid it, but in that electricity envelope, the utility envelope in my bill binder until now, there was already 140 buffer. So now I am a month, a quarter ahead on the water bill, and now I'm adding in another 40. So this has 180. So I already have enough for my quarter three bill when it comes at the end of September. And we're getting me into quarter four. And that's it for this one. 
There are two more binders that we're going to do. One is the, let's go to the things I need. I don't need, but I need, but I need. So there's not much in here at the moment because these things get integrated into other sinking funds or the travel. Uh, the yarn uh, is got $200 in it already. It's not getting more. Why do I need money for yarn? Uh, because eventually I will be going to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. And in 2025, no. In 2026, fingers crossed. Organization is getting 25. This will pay for my next Ikea trip next April, most likely, so maybe sooner. Who can tell anymore? Um, I wanna keep like $200 here so that when I go to Ikea and I want to buy everything I want, I have enough money. It has 20, 40, 60, 80, five, 95, 100. So the first 100 is down. Uh, and I go in April, the weekend of Easter. I don't celebrate Easter, I am Jewish. So uh, it is perfectly fine for me to go and do whatever I want. And Ikea is open, which is very exciting. Planner Supplies has a hundred. It's not getting anything. This is for me to buy my annual bullet journals. Uh, I am a Leutsch term bullet journaler, but I also um, like other planners. I'm trying a new budget planner from Erin Condren, which I'm liking a lot uh, for my business planner for budgeting. Um, so I pulled some of that from something else. Money wise, uh, it's perfectly fine. I'm very, and I'm enjoying it immensely. Uh, you'll see that in my business cash stuffing. Um, but I have to get better with this. I might have to increase what's here. We'll see. Books is getting nothing. It has $105. Um, I probably will be buying a couple books this month. Uh, August is Bookstore Romance Day. If you love reading romance, look at your local bookstore and see if they're doing any events with local authors, not just indie, but maybe traditionally published authors who might be local to you. Uh, it focuses around romance as a genre. They might be doing events, there might be sales, who knows? I expect I will be meeting some people and want to buy books. I will also be there talking about my romantic comedies. And then tech is getting 20. Um, I, I have a sense of what I'm going to need the tech for. And now I've promptly forgotten. Um, but there's some tech that I'm already identifying as needed. So it's one, two, 20, 45. I even wrote it down. I don't know where I put it. But I wrote, like, I had these notes about things I was going to tell you I'm doing with the money. And then I promptly hid it from myself. And it is not in anything. So uh, I do have some tech in mind that I need to be saving for uh, very likely a new tablet. So that is what it is. All right, that is this binder. You can see it's getting pretty thin. Uh, but the other binder is the travel binder. So tickets, hotels, uh, things are being booked for this trip. I'm very, very excited to be going on a vacation. I love, love New Orleans. Uh, the last time I was there was pre-pandemic, uh, but I went for a conference and I really just had a day to sneak in some um, touristy things. There are things I did not get to do or did not get to do in depth. Uh, and before that, the last time I had been there had been pre-Katrina when I was in college. Uh, I've been to Mardi Gras twice. Yes, I went to college in the South for a few years, so I've done Mardi Gras. Um, I also did Jazz Fest. I also met some friends there once and we did some bizarre music, minor music festival that we just thought we were so cool for. Um, so I do love to go, but I've never gone on a trip where I just go and it's me. I love a solo trip for things. So uh, my ticket has been purchased. We're putting $50 in and I think, hold on, I need to get my binder of what has what in it. This is probably the binder where I put all the little notes about things I was going to do. Yeah, Here, here's the note about what I need money for, for travel. Um, so I, even though I have all of these uh, budget sheets, I have put little things on the back so that I know um, where things go. Uh, so I have to, I, I've gone through what I need and what I think I need to put extra in. 
So travel is getting a hundred dollars. Um, and that's going to go into, I think I was going to put it in the unexpected one. Let me see. No, that has the hundred it needs. has what it, I don't know what this list was because I have what I need for him. I have what I need for uh, food. So I think we're gonna put this here in experiences, so I have 270. Um, this is for things like, uh, there's a club I wanna go see a show at, uh, depending on what is, um, now I've already lost track of what I put in here, um, 270. Um, I wanna do a tour of the graves, of the cemeteries, I wanna do a tour of the garden district, but probably all of downtown New Orleans area. Um, there's some museums I want to see. Food has got its own budget line and things like that. So that is, um, that is, looks like the thing that I need to stuff the most. I think the next thing after that will be once I, um, reconcile the cost of the plane ticket with the things I need for like parking the car, the shuttle to the airport and back, the Ubers around New Orleans when I need to take an Uber to get somewhere. Um, that will be the next things that get set. So I'll have to go back through that. But uh, His Royal Highness has all he needs for New Orleans. We're talking Disney for May 20 whenever, who knows now. So pins is now in the travel binder uh, because I will want $100 to buy pins, not just souvenirs. Uh, 500 has gone into hotel because I did not need as much as I thought I would need for my ticket to New Orleans or my hotel in New Orleans. So I was able to put 500 in my Disney hotel. That's like two nights. I'm gonna be honest with you. It We're staying on, on property. Um, experiences are here, unexpected. And then the dog is going to get the last 15 here for the first 15 that he needs for that trip. And we haven't made decisions on length of time, uh, but the nice thing about California is you don't need a whole week there. Um, I can stay a whole week if I want, but I think it'll be like a four or five day trip. Uh, and so I can plan accordingly. I know how much it costs for a dog sitter and we're perfectly happy. So that now has 15 uh, in Disney. And we're not gonna count the other uh, stuff. So that's where my sinking funds are. Uh, what else is in here for New I realized I didn't go through any of these. Uh, so New Orleans travel is not just airfare. It is the travel to and from the airport, the saving of the car in a parking spot, the Ubers. Experiences are touristy things, getting into museums, getting on tours, things like that. Food is food. I like to eat food in New Orleans. Uh, I would sit and eat beignets and drink hurricanes for a week if I could. Uh, it really... Uh, Cedric Care is the house the dog sitter. And unexpected are things that might pop up at the airport, um, things that I didn't realize I needed uh, because I left them at home, or uh, just sort of a buffer for the other trip. And then hotel um, is the hotel. I decided to pick a place I knew based on um, where it is located and the things I wanna do and see sort of being a central location. So if I wanna walk, I can walk. If I wanna get a car uh, or an Uber or something, I can do that. Um, or I can travel by public transportation. I'm perfectly happy doing that, especially when it's just me. Uh, in Disney, things we are saving for is the transportation. That is my airfare out to California. I do aim to use points. I have a JetBlue card and I use that almost exclusively as my credit card to get points. I also have a Disney card 
I have used that enough to get the Disney credits I want. Um, so I'll also have like a two to three hundred dollar gift card to Disney that will probably go into things like food and experiences. Um, I have to talk to Disneyland. I purchased a ticket for a trip a few years ago uh, that was for my sister that she ultimately did not end up using because of health reasons. Uh, and it has technically expired because the price is no longer valid, but I wanna see if I can get it and then pay the difference instead of paying for a whole new ticket. I don't know if it's possible, but I figured it can't hurt to ask. Uh, food is food. There's going to be a lot of it. We are doing characters. We're going to have a three-year-old. We're going to have two three-year-olds. Actually, maybe a three and a four-year-old. We're doing we're doing character meals, uh, especially because my niece's favorite characters are, in fact, Minnie, Mickey, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto. So we're going to have a lot of fun in California with food. Uh, I am a souvenir girl, Disney mini ears, Disney pins, postcards. Um, I, I love all of that crap. And if it's Star Wars, even more. And if it's Rainbow Unicorn, even, like this I bought. What do I need a keychain of Rainbow Unicorn for? I don't need it, but I need it. So I'm a souvenir girl. Uh, mostly because we were too poor when I was a kid to get souvenirs. So I want to, I have adult money now. Let's save it ahead of time. Pins are different than souvenirs. Pins are pins. Uh, the hotel going to be super expensive. So it's going to be a very aggressive save when it's time. Experiences are going to be for things like Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Uh, things you can't necessarily do with the cost of your ticket. Might not be a meal, but you want to do. And this might be things outside of Disney that we want to do in the LA Anaheim area. And then unexpected is the buffer of unexpected. And then Cedric is Cedric. And then what is after here? Nothing yet. My other 2025 travel plans have not been decided, but there's a very good chance a trip to see my parents in Miami is going to be one of the next things I do also. So that is it. That is my $1,000 and my new envelopes and my shifted envelopes. And if you've never been here before, now you know all the envelopes and I don't have to do it again till I change the system. So thank you for joining me. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you liked it. This is a longer one, but they're probably going to get shorter from here on out as I do less bill stuffing uh, and cutting these in half. So there are two stuffings a month. But the next stuffing this month, number 17, will be that, that magic month stuffing. Uh, probably another thousand to top off a couple of these uh, as much as I can, especially these travel ones. So subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. And if you want to see more of the writing, publishing of business, business of publishing kind of videos, those are typically Wednesday, Wednesdays. So Mondays are going to be money Mondays, Wednesdays, writing Wednesdays, Friday's going to be a free for all who knows what I'm going to post. Uh, and then um, sometimes there'll be Saturday or Sunday videos if I have too many things I want to share in a month. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.